Welcome everyone, I'm back again with another box from Video Games Monthly. Let's check it out. So today marks the end of an era. I am no longer receiving Japanese games. It was a fun curiosity while it lasted, but now that I have EverDrives for the consoles I play the most, I kind of lost my interest. Plus, after sifting through my entire collection, I ended up with a giant box of Famicom, Super Famicom, and Japanese N64 games that I don't want. Also, I feel like cataloging these Japanese games can sometimes be a nightmare, which may be the reason why we ended up with two Japanese games I already had. First one being Snowbow Kids 2, or as we'd call it, Snowboard Kids, just kind of weird. This game is going to be the death of me, apparently. We got another copy of Banjo-Tooie, which I'm technically wrong, it's Banjo-Kazooie 2, but we called it Banjo-Tooie. Anyway, if you didn't know, this is like the third or fourth copy of this game I've received. I don't know why it's haunting me the way that it is, but I'm sure there's nothing nefarious going on. Anyway, mistakes happened. I did reach out to VGM. They were kind enough to send me two replacement games, which we'll talk about. But let's get right to our first game. Let's check out Popeye on the Famicom. This is a game I never came across in the arcades as a kid. I can't say I'm the biggest fan of this game, but I do find myself playing it when I come across it at conventions. But to me, it's just not as legendary as Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, Frogger, or even Feed Big Bertha. Anyone remember that one? Essentially, you try to avoid Bluto while collecting whatever olive oil appears to be dropping down from above depending on the stage. Whether it's hearts, music notes, or letters that spell help, once you collect enough, you move on to the next stage. Of course, you can grab some spinach to instill the fear of God into Bluto while you temporarily chase him around the stage. While the game does seem easier than some classic arcade games of the time, I feel like it lures you into a false sense of security. Bluto will sometimes just hang out above you walking back and forth, causing you to become complacent while trying to collect the items needed to complete the stage, and then all of a sudden elbow drop you out of nowhere. I wasn't able to get past the pirate ship stage, but I only tried twice before having to move on to other games. I do have to mention, what is with this terrible off-key note in the intro song? Anyway, the game does feel a bit repetitive, but I had fun with it. I'll give it a beat. Next up, we got Super Fire Pro Wrestling 3 on the Super Famicom. Oh. This game. I can't even begin to tell you how broken this game feels. Maybe it's just me, but I have no idea what the hell is going on. I do remember getting another game in this series a while back mainly because I ended up selecting the exact same character, and all I remember is him constantly doing this worthless flip kick. And once you're on the ground, good luck gaining any advantage. Also, thanks to the isometric view, attacking your enemy seems damn near impossible. I can't tell you how many times I could have sworn I landed a kick, but no. And grappling? <laughs> your guess is as good as mine. With that being said, I couldn't win to save my life. Wait, I won? How, by disqualification? Who the hell cares? I'm typically pretty lenient when it comes to scoring games, but this game just seems unplayable. Obviously, these games were popular enough for this to be the third game in the series, but quite frankly, I don't even think two player could save this game. I'm gonna give it an F. What are the two games that they sent to replace the duplicates? Well, first up we got Pack Attack on the Sega Genesis. So it's like Tetris with a twist. It bothers me for some reason why there's so many so-called Tetris ripoffs that exist. 
but this one isn't bad. Mind you, I'm not the biggest fan of these types of games. I know cell phones didn't exist back in the day, but I feel like these types of games are better on handheld or on a mobile device. You know, a quick game to play while waiting for the wife to shop, or while waiting for a doctor appointment, or while performing bathroom duties. I can't say I hated it, but it's probably not a game I'll find myself coming back to. I'll admit I didn't have a bad time with it, and I can see people enjoying this game. I'll give it a C. Last up, we got Techno Clash on the Sega Genesis. I had never heard of this game and honestly knew nothing about it, but it's by Electronic Arts, so it's gotta be good, right? Right? Well, surprisingly, I kind of liked it. I can't tell you what the hell is going on, and there does appear to be a bit more depth in the gameplay that I wasn't willing to get into at the time. It kind of reminds me of a slow-paced gauntlet. You have a sword attack, which feels somewhat useless, but you also have a magic attack, which is what I found myself using the most. I do have to mention the death screams. They're just fantastic. <laughs> While it is getting more and more rare as time goes on and my collection grows, this is what I like about these subscription boxes. This is a game I probably would have never given a chance. While there's a ton of games in my collection that I'd rather play, I could see myself coming back to this one. I'll give it a B. Well, anyway, guys, that gives us an average score of C. Honestly, not that bad considering how much I hated Super Fire Pro Wrestling. Thanks again for watching, guys. You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Time to pack Nerd Distillery's box. Good to go. Nerd Stillery, we thank you for your business. If it wasn't for the continuous exposure on your highly influential YouTube channel, our company wouldn't be what it is today. <laughs> yeah. As a showing of our appreciation, please accept this very special box from your friends at Video Games Monthly. Well, that was nice of them. Well, let's see what we got. Oh, joy. Another copy of Banjo-Tooie. How fun. What is this, a joke? What in the hell? Oh my god. Dumbest dreams this time of the year. Good morning. Do you want some coffee? After the night I just had, yes, please. Would you like some banjo tui with your coffee? replacement games. Yes, I'm sure he'll be very happy with them. 
no, you can't really talk to him right now. He's, um, let's just say he overreacts a little bit. But yeah, I'll let him know that you called. Thanks. Have a great day. Fuck this game. Thank you guys so much for watching. I want to take a quick second and thank Joe from Video Games Monthly for being such a good sport and agreeing to do this video with me. Uh, I was nervous about reaching out because obviously I didn't want to make it seem like I was trying to make the company look bad or discredit them in any way. Uh, I've been with VGM for, God, five years now, I think, and they've been nothing but good to me. It's all in good fun, and uh, obviously I can never pass up doing something well stupid like this. But thanks again for watching. You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you again next time, and have a happy Halloween.